Uh, the, ne the next thing I'd like to show you is just schematically how you build an application. Now, one of the things, again, we have in this system is an extremely dynamic object model, which means when you make an object, you don't have, the programmer doesn't have to decide what it's going to be hooked up to when they build the application. And that means everything, it turns out. So that at runtime, it can be decided how these objects are going to all hook together and those connections can be changed. And so let me show you a very simple application, which every developer uses called Interface Builder. I'm going to build a very trivial little application just to show you how we do this. So we're going to get a window here. And we have palettes of objects up here. We have menus. Uh, we have some little UI widgets. And you can add your own widgets. And we'll just take a text field right here, and we'll uh, bring up the font panel here. And we'll go ahead and uh, make that a large font so we can all read it. And uh, we'll grab a slider right here. And we will go ahead and um, set that slider to uh, just have a value from uh, 0 to 100. And we will then make a connection between that slider and the text field by dragging a line. And a panel will pop up, and it will go interrogate that text object and show me all the messages that text object can understand. And we'll pick one that says, uh, you know, take the floating point value. And now, we don't have to compile anything because we're not generating any code. We'll just say, run. And these objects will run themselves. And now when we drag the slider, we'll get values from 0 to 100. And what's happening is, is these objects are just communicating at runtime. No code's been generated. There's no code to maintain. What we found a long time ago was the line of code that a developer can write the fastest, the line of code that a developer can maintain the cheapest, and the line of code that never breaks for the user is the line of code the developer never had to write. <laughs> so, The goal here is to literally eliminate 80% of the code that every developer has to write for their app, because it's in common with every other app, and let them focus on just the 20% of their code that's unique and value add to their app. That's what this is all about. So let's, let's go do a little more. We'll go do a little more here, and we'll say, um, great, let's uh, move this up here. Let's move this here. Let's go grab a. Uh, Let's go grab a text field here. And we will, um, we will say we want to enable graphics in this text field here. And uh, we can then go back to our application and just run it. And again, you see this still works. And here's some text, and we can just type in this thing. And now we want to make the fonts a little bigger. Ah, forgot to put the font commands in. So great, we just go back here, grab the menu to that app, and we just say, let's grab a font menu and drop it in. And we'll go run our application again. And now we can type in some text. We can go back and we can bring a font menu up, just like in every other app in the system. Select different fonts, select different sizes. We can even go grab some pictures and drag and drop them in, et cetera, et cetera. And again, this is how apps are built. They're built incrementally. They're built by connecting objects together. And they're built by removing code for the developers. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you today. And uh, the next team certainly looks forward to being integrated into Apple and to working with all the great people at Apple to come up with a next generation system uh, that I think is going to be truly a breakthrough. And the great thing about it is that you can get your hands on it today to start developing applications so that when we start shipping this stuff in less than a year, uh, your applications can be ready to roll on it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you.